Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So today we are here to address the elephant in the room, or in this case, the pimples. I get so many comments all the time on my videos about, oh my gosh, you have such clear skin, your skin's so beautiful, how do you not have any acne? And the truth is, I totally do. I just use makeup to cover it up. Today is especially bad, like this little like nose crater, as I like to call him, otherwise known as PD the pimple before he surfaced, has just been on another level. I have not worn makeup all week because of it. And when I do have really active breakouts like I do right now, I do not recommend wearing makeup. And I recommend that other people do not as well. However, I do know that there are times when you have an active breakout like myself where wearing makeup is not really a choice. You have to do it whether you're going to work or school or an event. And in my case, I'm going to be going on a vacation very shortly and going to some very special events. So I need to be able to cover this bad boy up. So I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to show you guys how I cover mine up and how I kind of treat my skin in order to make it look the best that it possibly can during a breakout. So my first step is going to be to start with a moisturizer. And this might sound kind of counterproductive to a breakout, but when you break out, your skin tends to get overly dry because of all the treatments you put on it, whether it be salicylic acid or toners or astringents. Um, I use a combination of a bunch of different things. I use Dermalogica um, breakout control. I use a benzoyl peroxide cream and those all really dry out your skin in order to dry out the breakup, but they also dry out the rest of your skin as well, which is why you tend to get flaky. And sometimes also why things do not heal as fast. When things like blemishes and fine lines and wrinkles in your skin in general, and it's kept moisturized, everything heals and looks so much better. So for today, I'm gonna to be using the Drunk Elephant Lala Retro Whipped Cream um, Moisturizer right here. I love this. Normally I will never use this under foundation because it is very heavy duty and can be a little bit greasy, but because I am so dry and flaky today, this is what we're using. I'm just gonna apply this focusing on my cheeks and then very slightly bring it onto my other areas such as my forehead and my chin. And then last but not least onto my nose where I have, you know, that really fun little face crater. And then when I get to my nose or when you get to any blemish and you're applying product on top of it, you wanna make sure A, that your hands are super clean and B, that you're not really rubbing it too much because you can tear the skin and because that skin is already so sensitive and irritated, you do not wanna make things any worse. So I'll just very lightly use my finger and tap the product into that area. One of the other things I really like to do when I do have a breakout and I do have to wear makeup is to make sure that I'm treating while I'm concealing. So first I'm gonna be using the Dermalogica Breakout Control right here. This is also from the Medibac Clearing Line. This does an amazing job. So it says that this is a fast absorbing gel that contains natural antibacterial agents, including, I think it's called Lactobacillus Ferment, to help clear and prevent breakouts without the drying effects of a benzoyl peroxide treatment. Apply a thin layer and allow to dry. So all I basically do is I'll squirt a tiny, tiny bit of this onto the tip of my finger, like literally just that much right there. All I'm gonna do is again, just tap this onto any of my blemishes. And I got a lot today, girl. And I'm just gonna allow this to kind of soak in and absorb and dry completely down before I go in with my next step. We all know I have large pores, so for primer today, I'm gonna to be using the Makeup Forever Step One Base Smoothing Primer. Now. Super important, when you're using a primer and you have an active breakout, especially if it is silicone based, do not put the primer over any of your pimples or your blemishes. All this is gonna do is make your foundation and anything else that you put on top of that blemish slide off. And that's why a lot of times when you do have a breakout and you put makeup on and halfway through the day, you notice like you can see those things peeking through, that's why. So I'm gonna apply this everywhere but on my blemishes. So I really have enlarged pores on my cheeks lately for some reason, I do have some on my nose. So I'm still going to apply this to my nose. I'm just going to apply it around the zit. I'm also gonna put it on my chin and basically any place else where I have my problem areas, any place else that I have texture and large pores. This is just a really great primer and it's one of my all time favorites. And again, just kind of going around the little zit so that when I do um, kind of conceal those later and I put foundation and everything over them, it does not just slide right off. Now this is the part where things are gonna to start to look a little bit crazy, so just bear with me and trust me that it's gonna look okay in the end. So taking a clean, flat shader brush and a translucent setting powder, I'm just gonna dip my brush in here and then very gently tap it over any blemishes that I have. So I'm gonna start with the one right here on my kind of brow bone. Then of course, do the one on my nose, my little baby face crater, even though he's really not a baby, he's like a full grown adult sumo wrestler right now. I'm just gonna let this sit for a few seconds just to kind of absorb and make that area super matte so that the concealer that we're gonna put on top of it really sticks. For concealer today, I'm gonna to be using the Tarte Cosmetics Shape Tape in the color Light. Ideally, you'd want to use a cream-based concealer such as like a MAC Paint Pot. Those work really well, um, but I do not have one of those today, so I'm using my Shape Tape because it is the next best thing for this. 
And again, I'm just going to be going in with a flat, clean shader brush and dipping into the concealer. Then I'm going to very lightly tap it right on top of my blemishes. You want to make sure not to apply too much because then it's just going to make it look worse and make it stand out more. And if this is a little bit too light, that's totally fine because we're going to go in with our regular foundation shade over this. And again, we're just very lightly tapping. You don't want to rub or push too hard. You don't want to irritate that skin anymore. I'm just going to kind of keep tapping, not putting too much product. And what I'm going to do now is let this dry down just a bit and then blend out the edges of it. So I'm just very lightly blending out the edges of the concealer, making sure not to kind of go overly crazy and spread it out too far, but just to kind of feather it into my skin so it doesn't look so crazy because I am going to put the foundation over this. Now, another thing to note, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I did not put any applicators directly on my face, especially not with the concealer. I just dispensed it onto the back of my hand. The same thing with the powder. I put it onto a palette and I'm using them that way. You do not want to put any wands or any type of applicators directly on your face, especially when you're having an active breakout because you do not want to contaminate them. So now I'm just going to let this all dry down completely until it has no tackiness to it whatsoever and then set it with a little bit of powder. Now dipping back into my powder, I'm just going to go over all those spots that I just concealed because I want to lightly set those in place and make sure that it has no tackiness so that when I put my foundation on top of it, it does not slip and slide all over the place and undo all the cover up that we just did. And then I'm just going to take a large fluffy brush and I'm just going to take a large fluffy brush and very lightly tap all that excess powder off. Again, you don't want to rub and rub off all that hard work we've been putting in to cover these bad boys up. All right, so now that we have those bad boys kind of covered up, we're going to go in with our foundation. Today I'm going to be using the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is one of my new favorites. I'm just going to dispense some onto the back of my hand and then dot it all over my face and then blend it out with a damp beauty blender. Again, you do not want to put any type of applicator or anything directly on your face and making sure that your hands are super clean before you do this. With my beauty blender, I'm just going to kind of go ahead and start blending that all out. Now, when you get to the areas that you have the blemishes, any like active breakouts, you don't have to be super careful because with beauty blenders, they are very, very gentle. Obviously, it's just a sponge, but you do want to go just a tiny bit lighter on the tapping than you normally would and making sure not to rub or smudge at all. Um, I actually prefer when I'm breaking out to only use a beauty blender. I will not use a brush whatsoever because with a brush, it really, in my opinion, just makes everything shift around so much more and really undoes a lot of the coverage that we just laid down. So I'm just going to kind of keep blending everything out. Now, this is a very high coverage foundation. Obviously, the higher the coverage, the more kind of concealing it's going to do for all those acne and blemishes. And this is just one of my favorites because the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, you can really build it up without it looking cakey and really get as much coverage as you possibly need out of it. And obviously, girl, today we need all the coverage. Now I'm going to take the Tarte Cosmetics Shape Tape in the color Light Sand. This one's a little bit darker than the one that I use to conceal my blemishes. I'm just applying this to my under eye bags because, you know, those are always so cute. And again, just going to blend this out with a really damp beauty blender. Now, one very last time, I'm going to go ahead and take that flat shader brush, dip it into my powder on my palette, and then very lightly pat it on my blemishes. The reason I do this is because it really helps to dry down those blemishes and make sure that they don't kind of get gunky throughout the day, which I know sounds so gross but it also really helps to kind of set all that makeup and that concealer in place so that it does not move around during the day and you don't have them kind of like peeking through trying to like say hi midway through your event or your day or wherever you happen to be doing. Now I'm just gonna let those sit again for a couple seconds and kind of dry all the way down. And then I'm gonna take a large clean fluffy brush, dip it into a little bit of my powder from my palette here. I'm just going to very lightly dust the rest of my face kind of wiping off that excess powder from those blemishes as I'm going along. And I actually almost sometimes will just pounce it like this, this way I'm not necessarily wiping anything. And it just looks a lot more natural. And as you can see, kind of all of those blemishes now are just all nice and blended in. Now, obviously this one on my nose, I feel like you can still see him a little bit because he is so textured and so raised and just, he's a gnarly little bad boy, you guys. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't had a pimple this bad in in quite some time but for everyday wear and especially like in a pinch I feel like this is just such a great way to cover things up and honestly in person like when I'm looking in the mirror directly at myself in daylight and especially with all these like crazy soft boxes and ring lights around me it's still really hard to tell that I have a blemish my camera is super HD so I feel like on camera it probably doesn't look as concealed as it does in person so I mean HD good thing and a bad thing at the same time 
So now that everything is kind of nice and covered up, I'm just gonna go ahead with my regular makeup routine and I'll come back in just a few minutes to show you guys the final finished results. Now that I have the rest of my makeup on, I'm gonna go ahead and set everything in place with a setting spray. This again is just gonna kind of help to lock everything in place and make sure that all those little blemishes and pimples and this little, you know, face crater doesn't come playing peekaboo throughout the middle of the day. I'm gonna be using the Makeup Forever Mist and Fix. This is one of my all-time favorites and just applying this liberally all over. What's also nice is that because we are using a liquid to set everything in place, liquid on top of powder is gonna kind of create this melting effect that really kind of gives you that airbrush finish. Now one last tip that I do wanna leave you guys with besides the obvious ones of making sure your hands are clean and not cross-contaminating products and your brushes is when you are ready to take your makeup off for the day and you are having a breakout. Do not use a scrub, do not use a Clarisonic, do not use any type of cleansing device with like those little rubber tips like the Foreos. The only thing you should be using is your hand, especially do not use a washcloth um, or any type of towel, any type of makeup remover towelette or any type of pad. The only thing you should be using is clean fingertips and a cleansing balm. Um, my favorite ones to use right now are either the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse Balm or the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Makeup Remover Balm. They're kind of like an oil-based balm. You rub them between your fingers and they really melt into place. And then when you rub them all over your face, your makeup just kind of slides off. So you're not irritating your breakouts any further. And you're really making sure that all that makeup gets off without having to rub and tug on your skin and kind of add insult to injury as far as the redness and the irritation of the skin goes. Um, what's also really nice is when you use cleansing balms, it helps to soften up the skin. And as I mentioned earlier, when your skin is moisturized and kept soft, it heals a lot faster. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing my kind of how to cover up a pimple 101 course. Um, I'm really glad that I did film this, even though I am very self-conscious about my skin at this moment. As I said earlier, breakouts are something we all get. No one has perfect skin. So if you are someone who also suffers from acne or blemishes or breakouts, just know that you're not alone and we are all in this together. Now, if you guys have any tips or tricks as to how you cover up your blemishes that I didn't cover or things that you know work for you, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm always looking for new techniques. I love knowing how other people kind of do their routines and how they use products and how they apply them. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.